What's really good everybody? It is me, Mr. Drake, and in last week's video, I talked about my long-term must-have goal, which was to be able to spend more time with my children when they're in their school years. The reason for this is because, as an adult, I now realise that there's so many things that I wish I'd been taught about money and finances when I was younger, and I'd like to be able to share that with my children as they're growing up. Now, the wealth divide over the last few generations has continued to widen, and there's one main root cause of that, and that is the understanding of money. There are lessons that the richest people in the world could teach that would fundamentally change every person's finances forever, but generally speaking, their increase in wealth has to come at the loss of wealth to someone else. It's for this reason that personal finance is about five generations into a big game of Chinese whispers, and the messages now are completely misunderstood and outdated. Almost every parent wants to do right by their child, and they will teach them everything they know about personal finance to try and give them that head start. The problem in most cases is this is like Jeremy Clarkson giving advice on how to cook. I don't doubt that Jeremy Clarkson has probably cooked a number of meals in his lifetime, but it's by no means his strongest subject. With these four steps, any parent of any financial background will be able to give their children a head start in their personal finances and help them be successful with money. The moment that your child has a birth certificate, you can open for them a junior tax-free investment ISA. You can also open a tax-free junior savings ISA, but the returns aren't fantastic, so I would recommend putting the money into investments for the long haul. Because once opened, that investment ISA will have 18 years to ride the highs and lows of the stock market. And to the best of my knowledge, no major stock market index has ever finished lower than it started after 18 years. The reason why I say to open your child's junior ISA as soon as they're born is to take advantage of what some people call the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest and compound growth. I'm going to show you three examples of how you could invest £1,000 into your child's junior ISA. Each one hypothetically works off of a 7% annual return, compounded monthly. The first way is investing £100 a year from the ages of 8 to 18. You can see that this method will turn your £1,000 into £1,450. The second is if you invest £100 a year from the ages of 0 to 10. You can now see that the £1,450 from the first 10 years is given another 8 years to compound its value and it's increased by over £1,000 to £2,534. Thirdly, if you were to invest £1,000 as soon as you were able to and let it compound for the full 18 years, this will grow to over £3,500. Of course, if your child is a little bit older, you won't be able to take advantage of compounding for the full 18 years, but the fact still remains. The earlier that you can start investing into their future, the less you will actually need to invest. And this is because you can take advantage of compounding. Once the child turns 18, they will get full access to this account, but you can use it as an example to show them the value of compounding over time. And you can also show them at a young age the value of having money work for them. If ISIS are still around in 18 years time as well, you can explain to them the value of investments growing tax free. As most children grow up, their wants and wishes change in moments. As adults, we realize that to want something new means that it has to come at the cost of something else, and this is known as opportunity cost. It is the loss of income that acts as the opportunity cost of telling your boss to shove the job where it's very uncomfortable, and for that reason we tend to mutter it under our breath every now and then instead. Many children grow up not understanding this concept because more often than not, the parent pays the cost. For example, little Jimmy gets invited to his friend's birthday on the weekend, the opportunity cost is whatever the parent had already planned for that weekend. The earlier that you can teach children this concept, the more aware they become of the power of their decisions. I remember when I first learned this lesson. I was about 12 years old and my uncle was just heading off to work on his push bike and I was playing in the garden. I had a brilliant idea. I wonder if I could throw this tennis ball and bounce it off of his helmet from here. So, being an idiot, I gave it a go through the tennis ball, and amazingly, I managed to bounce it clean off the helmet back into the front garden. At that point, my uncle hopped off his bike, put it up against the wall, and came into the garden, and he explained to me a concept that I've never forgotten since. 
he asked me if I'd stopped to consider the results of my action. He explained to me how he was just about to start cycling on a main road and any distractions could have resulted in him getting hurt. And he also pointed out that if I'd missed the shot, I could have ended up just sailing the ball into the main road and that could have caused the distraction for a driver that could have led to a crash. This was the first time that I realized that every action had a reaction and every opportunity had a cost. I firmly believe that every child is born a blank canvas and that their environment around them leaves its mark and shapes them into the person that they become. From teachers to television to friends to family, the people that are around your child most often will play a hugely influential role in their development. Every parent wants to be a role model to their children and for many to not be would be a huge blow to their ego but I'm here today to suggest that it may not actually be such a bad thing. Take for example the story with my tennis ball and my uncle. My grandparents who raised me for over 10 years had tried many times to get me to consider the repercussions of my actions, but it had gone in one ear and out the other. My uncle, who was and still is one of my biggest role models, when he said it, it stuck with me and it never left. A financial role model doesn't have to be someone earning 80 grand a year, driving a Maserati, eating avocado on sourdough toast, wearing Louboutins to the shops. It can be someone who's just got a positive cash flow and is building towards their future. It could be somebody with a skill or a talent in accounting or taxes or economics or even salesmanship or investing. Don't look for the financial role model who looks like they're doing good with their money. Because as we would have seen, either in ourselves or in others around us, it's very easy but expensive to look like you're doing well with money. Financial role models can be found in your family, your circle of friends, or other parents that go to the school that your child goes to, or other parents at clubs that your child attends. The best way to learn about money is to interact with it. And there are many ways that you can interactively learn about money. Opportunity costs, spending, saving and investing and you can make it fun. Whether it's board games, toys, or online games, there are all ways that you and your children can learn together. Another way that you could learn with your children while interacting with money is to work with them to create a business or income. The old lemonade stand is a bit outdated at this point, but in this modern economy, there are many ways that you can create a small income or a small business with your children, and they get to experience every stage of the process with you. Whether it's making slime, cleaning cars, or buying selling arbitrage, you may stumble across a nice little learner, like the 11 year old girl in America who built a national Etsy business selling sugar body scrubs. Experiencing it together will build a bond between you, and you will both almost definitely learn something new about money or yourself that you didn't know before. Now I'm not saying these are the only four things you need to do as a parent. From reading about it, I'm starting to realise parenting is a tapestry of a million and one different skills and disciplines, most of which I don't know yet. However, with these four steps put into practice, your child will turn 18 with a nice little nest egg waiting for them. They'll have the understanding of the value of that money. They'll have the understanding of the opportunity costs of whether they decide to spend it, save it or invest it. They'll also understand the value of having a mentor and role model and they'll have the resiliency and the creativity to create their own income. And they may already have their own income by the age of 18, which gives them a further head start into adult life. However old your child is, it is never too late to start teaching them about financial literacy. I didn't start until I was 24. I wish I'd started at 14, because I'd be 10 years of action and education closer to achieving my goals. Until next time, stay cash flow strong. Turn your wages into wealth. Have a great week. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like, leave a comment or share the video so that we can help get it out to a wider audience. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and get notified so that you see when new videos come online. Have a great week. See you soon.